My name is Sarmad, and today I want to talk about building effective agents with Model Context Protocol, or MCP. So a lot has changed in the last year, um, especially as far as agent development is concerned. I think 2025 is the year of agents, and uh, things like MCP make agent design simpler and more robust than ever before. So I want to talk about what the agent tech stack looks like in 2025. The second thing is a lot of uh, MCP servers today are uh, just you know one-to-one -one mappings of existing REST API uh, uh, services to MCP tools, uh, but MCP servers can be a lot more than that. They could even be agents, and so I want to show how uh, agents can be represented as MCP servers. And the last thing is uh, a little bit of a look into uh, agent architecture and modeling agents as asynchronous workflows with workflow orchestration uh, infrastructure like Airflow, Temporal, etc. So a little bit about me. I'm the CEO of Last Mile AI, and I've in the past uh, been working on developer tools uh, for a while, for many years. And back in 2016 to 2018, I was working on a language server protocol and language servers at, at Microsoft. Uh, LSP revolutionized IDEs. Here on the right, you can kind of see uh, the list of hundreds and hundreds of language servers that are now available. But before this, uh, every IDE had to had a, a unique API surface, and so every language server had to implement, uh, you know, VS Code specific way of doing things or an Eclipse specific way, and it was very fragmented as an ecosystem. And LSP completely, you know, changed that. Uh, by standardizing a single interface, API interface, for how language services should be exposed in IDEs. And so when uh, you know, LLMs took off, even before tool calling was a thing, I've been thinking about what it would take to make a LSP-style protocol for LLMs. And I've been thinking about this for a long time. Here you have this like scratch pad from 2023, where uh, this is the era of you know, chat GPT plugins. And uh, I was thinking of how you know uh, agent authentication should work, or how LLM should be connected to tools, resources, data in some way. Uh, and so, Model Context Protocol, which Anthropic created a few months ago, has been a godsend. And I think it incorporates a lot of the things that uh, are really necessary to to get um, you know agents into production. And we'll talk a little bit about that. Like I stated before, I think 2025 is the year that agents hit production uh, en masse. Uh, until now, there have been a lot of uh, high uh, impact use cases that uh, our customers see that have been stalled in proof of concept stage. Things like, you know, people want to work, uh, do workflow automation, they want to uh, deal with unstructured data uh, and process it in interesting ways, uh, they want to do information retrieval. And you're starting to see agents appear in each of these categories already. And I think that pattern will accelerate uh, in the coming months. So what does this tech stack look like for agents in 2025? There are three big uh, kind of updates or changes that are happening, uh, which I think uh, allow you to build effective agents uh, much more easily than ever before. So the first thing is better models. We have... Uh, reasoning models and LLMs that are pretty reliable for a lot of use cases. And with test time compute, uh, a lot of the complexity, things like you know chain of thought reasoning uh, or React or other kind of patterns that have been implemented at the framework layer are actually now shifting left into the inference layer. And all that uh, allows is for less complexity and less burden for app developers because they can get a lot more done by just invoking a model API than ever before. The second thing is model context protocol uh, or MCP. For folks who are not familiar, MCP is basically a standardized interface for connecting LLMs to tools, to data, to resources, to the world around them. Uh, and so the really re the revolutionary thing about it is that it is a single way, it provides a single interface to connect and give context to LLMs, uh, whereas in the past there used to be uh, you know, a multitude of data connectors that were platform specific that you would have to integrate with. And MCP has taken off, you know, like Google, 
OpenAI, Microsoft, many other companies, potentially competitors, uh, have all kind of coalesced around MCP. Uh, and so it is going to become the de facto standard for how LLMs connect to the world around them. And the last part that's really uh, changed in the last few months is there are simpler architectures for uh, how agent applications should look. Agents today, unlike the past, are now simply you know, orchestrators of better models and MCP uh, and connecting LLMs to these tools and resources using these standard protocols uh, in some well-defined patterns. There's no longer a need for monolithic AI frameworks that did a lot of heavy lifting at the framework layer in the past. Uh, now you can have simple agent patterns, you implement them with uh, standard protocols with good LLMs, and you can get a long way. And just to show you, uh, Anthropic at the uh, uh, end of last year, beginning of this year, released this very influential blog post called Building Effective Agents. And in it, they highlighted a couple of agent patterns that work well in production from their experience with uh, you know, deploying agents uh, into enterprises. And so the simplest example of this pattern is this thing called an augmented LLM, which is basically an LLM that has access to tools and resources or data. Uh, and you basically, you know, it's the base building block. You run this LLM in a loop, it gets an input, it may call tools, it may retrieve data in order to do its job, and it runs, you know, several uh, iterations and returns a response at the end. And then you can build more interesting patterns on top of that. So then you could have an augmented LLM, which is the optimizer uh, that generates a response, and you can connect it to another augmented LLM, uh, which is the evaluator that evaluates the quality of the generated response and gives feedback to the, to the generator LLM uh, to see what it could do better. And this process happens over like a set of uh, iterations until the evaluator LLM is happy with the quality of the response and then it you know, returns the final response to the user. You could have you know, distributed systems practices like fanning out to multiple uh, sub agents and then fanning back in uh, to aggregate the results. And perhaps the most sophisticated one, which we're starting to see in uh, tools like Claude Code and other uh, you know, agentic systems is this idea of an orchestrator where you have one LLM that, does, that generates a plan and uh, assigns tasks to sub-agents uh, dynamically and then synthesizes the results uh, before res responding back to the user. And this process can also run in a loop, but really the idea is that there is a planner that is reasoning and deciding uh, what to do next, kind of dynamically. So uh, what I did towards the end of last year uh, as part of my Christmas break was uh, I wanted to build an agent uh, library that implemented all of the patterns that this Building Effective Agents blog post uh, had uh, and basically was very opinionated about the world being MCP native in the very near future. And so that's what I built. It's called MCP Agent. Uh, it's on GitHub. You can check it out. Uh, and it is basically making a few very key opinionated choices. One is that MCP is going to be everywhere. So every line of business application, uh, think like you know Notion, Google Docs, Cursor, or Claude, is soon going to be an MCP compatible client. Uh, so that means that it could connect to MCP servers. And on the flip side, I think every service, uh, this is already starting to happen, is going to have an MCP server equivalent uh, for it. And so you're going to see things like, you know, a linear MCP server, a GitHub MCP server, and any kind of like SaaS product that needs to expose itself to LLMs will have an MCP server. The second thing that I'm going to show in a little bit is that agents should be thought of as uh, microservices and they can be deployed as MCP servers themselves. And as we'll talk about in a little bit, that actually gives a lot of benefits on how multi-agent interactions can work. And the last part is agents are async workflows and they should be modeled as such because they can be paused, resumed, retried. You may have a human in the loop uh, and that's really a workflow orchestration that's asynchronous instead of something that's uh, you know, happening in your chat session. Uh, in proc. You know, if you think of uh, 
agentic behavior in the MCP world today, it all happens on the client side. So you use Claude or Cursor, and they in turn use MCP servers to solve your, the tasks you give them. But what if agents themselves were exposed as MCP servers? In that case, if, if you connect an agent as an MCP server to an MCP client, then that client uh, can invoke that agent, it could coordinate uh, across multiple agents, it could orchestrate, similar to the patterns I showed you, the same as it does today with any other MCP server. Also, you could do multi-agent communication also over MCP. So agents can then invoke other agents. In this diagram, you kind of see an MCP client that's connected to MCP, regular MCP servers like GitHub, Slack, Linear, etc. But it's also connected to agent servers. Uh, and these agent servers, in turn, can connect to other MCP servers uh, just over the base MCP protocol. Uh, and so then you can kind of get multi-agent collaboration and coordination for free. The MCP client can invoke, in this case, MCP agent server A, which in turn may invoke other MCP servers or it may even invoke other agents. Uh, and as a result, you basically have this network of agents that uh, may get activated from a single command that a user sends through Claude, Cursor, or some other MCP client. So what are the benefits of this? If you expose agents as MCP servers, the first thing you get is composable agents. Like I mentioned, you have complex multi-agent systems that can operate over the same base protocol that everybody's adopting. We know MCP is gonna be a common standard, and so we can uh, safely build on top of it. The second thing is you get platform agnostic agents. You can build these agents once, and then you can reuse them anywhere that is MCP compatible. And finally, you get scalable agents. Um, if you run agent workflows on dedicated infrastructure, then you can kind of separate the, where, the agent is, uh, uh, where the agent compute is happening from uh, the client that is being used to invoke the agent. Uh, and that gives enormous benefits in terms of you know, scalability, uh, performance, and uh, durability as well. So I've talked about agents as async workflows. What I mean by that is that agents can be paused and resumed. Uh, they need to await on human feedback in some cases. Uh, they may fail and then they need to be retried. Uh, agents could be triggered or scheduled. It's not just a chat application that uh, is agentic. You could have a webhook that triggers an agent or a cron job that you know triggers an agent every, every day or every week or something. Uh, and so the right way to model all of this is as asynchronous workflows. And so that's what we do in MCP Agent as well. We use Temporal uh, as the durable execution backend to do the compute or the orchestration of agent execution. So let's do a quick demo to show what all of this looks like, uh, just to make it more real. So uh, the first thing you'll see here is I have uh, this task that I wanna uh, build an agent for. Uh, in this case, it's a fairly complex task. I'm asking an agent to load the student's short story from a markdown file, which is this, uh, but we assume this is a student's short story. Uh, and then I wanna generate a report, uh, basically grade this short story across proofreading, uh, factual and logical consistency, as well as style adherence. And by the way, for the style adherence, uh, I wanna use the APA style guide from this URL. Uh, and finally, I wanna write that graded report uh, to the markdown file, a graded report.md. So the agent that I've created here is actually um, gonna do a couple of things, but first I connect it to a couple of MCP servers. I have the fetch MCP server, which uh, can connect to URLs and get fetch data from the internet. And I have the file system uh, MCP server to interact with the file system. So right off the bat, because uh, of MCP, I don't need to interact with the file system or uh, interact with the internet and, and fetch URLs in a, in a unique way. It's all over the same base protocol and it's all exposed as tools from these MCP servers. Uh, and then I define a couple of these agents where I have a finder agent that can fetch content from the internet or from disk. I have a writer agent that can write stuff to disk. Uh, I have a proofreader, a fact checker, a style enforcer. And then I have an orchestrator recall from you know, those uh, agent patterns I showed you. Uh, this one will basically generate a plan given the task and it will, use, uh, it will orchestrate these agents that I've defined uh, in a, a way that it sees fit. 
So this workflow uh, is about like a hundred lines of code uh, and that it's still doing something fairly sophisticated. So if we run this, uh, we're gonna use temporal to run this. And so I'll kick this off and you'll see that the worker job has triggered and it's gonna start executing. Uh, workflow UI, you see that there is a workflow that's been triggered. And the first thing you'll see that the agent does is it actually generates a plan. So over here, you see that it's broken down the task I gave it, the fairly complex multi-step task, uh, into a series of steps that it's gonna do. First, it's gonna load the student's short story, uh, and it's gonna use the finder agent for that. In turn, the finder agent is gonna use the file system MCP server. Then it's gonna analyze uh, the short story using the proofreader, uh, the fact checker, the style enforcer, and finally it's gonna uh, generate the graded report.markdown file and write with the writer agent. And so then you see that the agent is executing. Uh, there's a whole workflow graph. This can fail at any step and can be retried. It can be terminated. It can await for human feedback. And here you see that it already completed. So we should have a graded report.markdown file that's generated for us. Um, and if we see what's in it, you can kind of see that it did what I asked it to. Uh, factual consistency, APA style guide. Um, it was able to do all this correctly. Lastly, you can actually do the same thing now by exposing this agent as an MCP server. You can connect it to an MCP client like Claude Desktop. Here I have the agent exposed as an MCP server and you see that it exposes itself as workflows. Uh, and so I gave it the same short story here um, and I asked it to grade it use, with this basic agent. And so what it does is it runs the, in, the, the, the workflow, it gives the input of the story, and then it pulls for the status of that workflow job. Because note that the agent is executing in a different uh, execution environment. I could close my Claude desktop and come back and, and it can check the status of that workflow and get me the results at a later date. And so the asynchronous nature of this work of this agent uh, helps me uh, kind of you know kick off agent tasks from anywhere, and then it like once the agent uh, completes, it presents me the report over here, and so I can still use this agent in a chat bot environment. I can run this agent anywhere that is MCP compatible. Thank you all for listening to this. There's a lot more that you can do uh, with agents because of the revolution that MCP is causing. I'd love to chat more uh, in general about uh, the future of agents. Uh, so you can come find me over email, Twitter, or GitHub. Thank you.